Kid 7, Day 2 Test Review Section 4-5 through 4-8. The other classes chose number 70. They were going to choose 69, but I pointed out they're very close to each other. So if you really want to see something different in a video to pick something else. So they did. They went and picked 66. And then last period picked number 63. So, pick a problem, any problem. 72. 72. This guy down here? Everybody okay with that? 72? 72. Okay. So let me write this so you can all read it because I know it is kind of fuzzy up here. This says x cubed plus 32x over x cubed plus 8x. Okay, that's the original problem. All right, so the very first question that's asked is about the domain. For the domain, we specifically look to the denominator. We say, hey, x cubed plus 8x cannot equal 0. So does it equal 0 anywhere? All right? You should factor this then. You could factor an x out, get x squared plus 8. So x cannot equal 0, and x squared plus 8 cannot equal 0, which this is never going to be 0. If you subtract the 8 from both sides, you get x squared equals negative 8. If you take the square root, you get imaginary numbers. So you get nothing from that part. And that's something that happened in first period's video. They only had that part, but they didn't have this guy here. All right. So what this is saying is on a number line from negative infinity to positive infinity, here's 0. It cannot be 0. It can be everything over here from negative infinity to 0. And it can also be everything over here from 0 to infinity. So that is your setup for your domain. Want to be served drinks in my class? Is that what it is? <laughs> All right, here we go. Next, part B is uh, x intercepts and y intercepts. x intercepts and y intercepts are points, guys. They are not x equals 5, okay? That's a, uh, x equals 5 is a vertical line, you know? So you got to make sure that you're giving me an x intercept as a point that has a y value of 0. So you might have gotten a point marked off on the take-home quiz if you didn't give it to me as a point, all right? So here we go up to the original problem, and we put a 0 in for the y over here, and we get x cubed plus 32x over x cubed plus 8x. Multiply both sides by the denominator, and you get the numerator equaling 0. And you factor... x equals 0, and x squared plus 32 equals 0. This you get nothing out of again, just like what happened over here. Okay, it's very similar to this. But you do get x equals 0. So at 0, 0, it crosses the x-axis. What does that tell you about the y-intercept? It's also 0, 0. That's the only one that if you get it for the one, you're going to get it for the other one. But if you don't remember that, you would just go to the original problem and plug a 0 in for the x value, in which case you would get um, y equals 0 plus 0 over 0 plus 0, which is <laughs> 0 over 0. You know, it's, it's like kind of undefined right there, which we already mentioned. It's undefined right there. Okay, so is it really an x-intercept at 0, 0 if it's undefined at 0? You know, so that's something we're going to have to think about. And let's take it, you back up to this problem right here. Right here, what if I factor an x out of the top and an x out of the bottom? See how you have an x on the top and bottom there? They cancel? What is that when you can cancel something from the top and bottom? A hole. So the x-intercept is actually a hole there. It doesn't really cross there. Same with the y-intercept. So as far as x-intercept, really, shouldn't it be none? 
And why intercept? Shouldn't it be none? Because there's a hole there. So it doesn't really hit the x-axis. So for those right there, and that doesn't happen very often, when you go to put these, none. It's not going to hit the x-axis or the y-axis at all. Okay. All right. Whoops, sorry. Next, we have part C. Part C is about the symmetry. For symmetry, that's where we're going to take and we're going to plug a negative x in for all of the x's. Okay, so when I go up to the original problem and plug a negative x in, I get negative x cubed plus 32 times negative x. In the denominator, negative x cubed plus 8 times negative x. This here gives us negative x cubed minus 32x on top and negative x cubed minus 8x on the bottom. Now, since both of these have a negative on the, on the top, can't I factor it out to give me this? And since both of them have a negative here on the bottom, can I factor it out to give me that? And then those two negatives cancel with each other, leaving me. Man, you guys chose a good problem. It's got some twists and turns in it. It gives you that. Is that the original problem? That's the question. Yeah, that means it's even. But in the other classes, when you watch those videos, you're going to find, you know, I think just about all of them were even. Maybe first periods wasn't. Uh, but um, we didn't have to do all this extra stuff. You guys just had extra X's in yours that, you know, made it happen like that. So yours is even. So whatever's on one side is going to be on the other. So, like, once you know the right side of the graph, you also know the left side of the graph. Okay, next is part D. These are the asymptotes. Okay, the asymptotes, really, if we want to do what's best for us right now, we really want to leave that x out of the numerator and denominator and just use the x squared plus 32 and the x squared plus 8 because we know that we have a whole at x equals 0. And if we don't get rid of it now, like already before doing the asymptotes, we might get confused and think there's an asymptote there. There's only an asymptote if it's left in the denominator and it doesn't cancel. So for this one right here, as far as vertical asymptotes, it's where the denominator equals zero. Does this denominator ever equal zero? No, so there are none. Horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are always y equals, you take the highest power on the top and bottom and divide them, 1. And this is not going to have a slant asymptote, not for tomorrow either, because I already asked you the question with a slant asymptote back on uh, Thursday of last week. I specifically chose all of these problems to not have a slant asymptote to choose from. All right, so that takes care of part D. Now for part E, it's finding the derivative, okay? So for part E, let me rewrite this so that we have some space then. It's uh, x cubed plus 32x over x cubed plus 8x. All right, so we go and we take the derivative. To take the derivative, it is the um, quotient rule, bless you. Derivative of the top. Now, again, should I leave the x out? You know, I could leave the x out, and it might be a little bit smaller um, or not. I don't, so I don't know what you guys are going to do, you know. So I'll leave it in just in case you forget, just so that you can see what it looks like. Derivative of the top is 3x squared plus 32 times the bottom, which is x cubed plus 8x, minus the top, which is x cubed plus 32x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 3x squared plus 8. All divided by the bottom squared. Okay, now, in the numerator, I'm going to have to foil these two together, foil these two together, distribute that negative to everything over there after I foil them, and then combine like terms. So there's definitely a big algebra piece here. 
So for, first I get 3x to the fifth. Outside is plus 24x cubed. Inside is plus 32x cubed. And then last, 8 times 32, well, that's positive, ends in a 6, carry the 1, 256. So that part there alone is 3x to the fifth plus 56x cubed plus 256x. Okay, now minus. Now, I'm going to put the rest of this in parentheses here because I have to remember to distribute that negative. So your problem definitely harder than the other classes that you chose. <laughs> Who chose this one? All right, we distribute that. We get 3x to the fifth. <laughs> then the outside, we get plus 8x cubed. And then inside, I get plus 96x cubed. And then last, 32 times 8. Well, I just did it over there. So that's going to be plus 256x. Okay. Now I'm going to have to distribute this negative. So minus 3x to the fifth. This here, when I add it together, gives me 104x cubed. But with the minus, minus 104x cubed. And then minus 256x. All divided by that denominator squared. Well, some nice things happen here. The x to the fifth cancel. Next, I have 56x to the third and negative 104x to the third, which is probably about negative 48x to the third. And then the 256s cancel as well. So, well, that works out pretty nice, right? So this here is my first derivative. I set it equal to zero. I'm going to put a box around it because we're going to have to come back and use it. I set the numerator equal to zero, which is when x is zero. I set the denominator equal to zero. Remember, the denominator, when I set it equal to zero above, it was also at x equals zero because there was a hole here. So that means there's not a zero here, really, because there's a hole. The top and bottom both have an x that could cancel. So I go to my first derivative number line, and I put a zero there, but I put a squiggly. Remember, whenever there's an asymptote or a hole, we put a squiggly line there to say it can't really equal that number, but we do have to test around it. I pick a number to the left of it, like negative 1, number to the right of it. Plug it in over here. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 48 is positive for the numerator. Since the denominator is squared, it's going to be positive. So I get positive for that section. Then I plug a 1 in. When I plug a 1 in, I get negative 48 times 1, which is negative, and denominator positive, so negative for that section. So what I can say here is that this graph is increasing from negative infinity to 0, and it's decreasing from 0 to infinity. Now, some people say, oh, but it goes from plus to minus. Does that mean it's a maximum at 0? There's a hole at 0. It doesn't exist at 0. So no, there's not a maximum there. And there's no minimum. So as far as max, no max, no min. Next, I go to the second derivative. I have the first derivative right here. Derivative of the top. 144. Negative 144 x squared. So there's the derivative of the top times the bottom. x cubed plus 8x squared. Minus the top. So minus negative, doesn't that become plus? Times the derivative of the bottom. Well, the derivative of the bottom is the power chain rule. So the 2 comes out front, knocks down by 1. But then you've got to peel that outside layer away and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared plus 8. All divided by the bottom squared. x cubed plus 8x. Is that right? Is that the denominator? Squared would be to the fourth power, right? I can't see it, so I'm trying to picture what I was just working on. Oh, gosh, does it look messy. 
This is how it, like the like the one on the test is gonna be. To a point, this one's harder. Uh, actually, a big chunk of the problems today in the reviews are more difficult than the ones on the test. But that's okay. That means it'll be easier, you know, for you when you do it. So. But this is very similar to one that we talked about before that you can see that each of these has an x cubed plus 8x. And so that's what you try to do. In the numerator, you factor out an x cubed plus 8x. If there's any other number you want to factor out, you can factor it out as well, like they both are divisible by 48. Didn't we do 3 times 48 for that? See how that has a 48? You know, so I could factor out a 48 as well. You know, if you do, it's going to just give you smaller numbers, which is kind of nice. Okay, so now what is left? Do you want to factor a negative out too or not? Or are you okay with the first term being negative? Okay, so I'm left with negative 3 then, because that divided by 48 is negative 3. Um... Do you want to factor an x squared out? They both have an x squared. It'll just make your life a little easier later. That means that's gone. This all but we have one of those left. There's one here times that one there. Gives me the squared. And then over here, I have a plus. Now I factor two of those out, so I still have an x left with that right there. Um, I factored the 48 out, so this is a 2x right there. This is out front, and I still have this. All divided by the denominator squared. So I'd probably focus over here, distribute, that gives me negative 3x cubed minus 24x. Distribute here, plus 6x cubed plus 16x. Now here I have 48x squared and x cubed plus 8x. But you might start to see that, hey, that cancels with one of those in the denominator. This guy here and this guy reduce. So I have 48x squared. In here I have 3x cubed minus 8x. So yeah, you guys is definitely was algebraically a little tougher than some of the other classes. Couldn't you also factor one of those x's out there? 48x cubed, 3x squared minus 8. You wouldn't have to do that. Any, either one of those answers is good for the second derivative. Then you got to set it equal to 0. When you set the numerator equal to 0, well, x equals 0. But we already determined x can't be 0 in this. There's a hole. That's okay. We'll put it on the number line. And then where is 3x squared minus 8 equal to 0? We'll subtract the 8 from both sides. Or add the 8, sorry. Divide by 3. And take the square root. So x equals 2 rad 2 over rad 3. Or you just leave it as 8 thirds under the square root, but you need a plus or minus. So here we go. We don't really know what those numbers are. We know that 0 is here and it can't be that. Right? We know that negative infinity is here, positive infinity. And we know that we have a negative rad 8 thirds and a positive rad 8 thirds. Do you know a number kind of close to that? Like, what about a red nine, negative red 9 thirds? Isn't that kind of close? To square root of 3, which is like negative 1.7. You know, really all you need to be able to do is pick a number on either side of it. So if you know this is like around negative 1 point something, you don't know what it is, you can say, well, then negative 1 is here. And you can say, oh, let's do negative 5, because I don't know what that number is exactly. You know, you can kind of guess out a little bit if you want. And then you can say 1 and 5 over here because it's even. So you can pick the same numbers, positives and negatives, on each side. We're then going to plug it in here. If I plug a negative 5 in here, 48 times negative 5 cubed, I know it's negative. Negative 5 squared is 25 times 3 is 75 minus 8 is positive. Negative 5 cubed, now here's where it might be a little bit more difficult. Negative 5 cubed is negative 125 plus or minus 40 
is negative 165. The cube root of a negative number is negative. So that's positive. Plugging a negative 1 will be. So you can see if you guess out too far, you can see your numbers are a little harder to plug in. Plugging the negative 1 in, I get negative. I get negative again because I get 3 minus 8, which is negative 5 there. In the denominator, I'm going to get a negative cu the cube cubed again, and negative cubed is still negative. So that's negative for that part. Plugging the 1 in, I get a positive and a negative, and I have positive, which is negative for that part. And then plugging the 5 in. It's probably going to be the same as that other down there because it's an even function, but I get positive out front, I get positive inside, and down on the bottom, I get positive, so it's positive for that section. All right, so then we list. It's concave up from negative infinity to negative rad 8 thirds, and also from rad 8 thirds to infinity. It's concave down from negative rad 8 thirds to 0, and also from 0 to rad 8 thirds. Now, a few of you did this. You said, oh, well, these are right next to each other, so let me just combine them into 1. You can't do that, because at 0, it's not, there's no concavity there. The derivative doesn't exist, so you can't include it. And then the final question, I was hoping I'd be able to see that other one, plus minus. That other question is to graph it. So here's the first derivative. So it's negative positive around zero. All right. So we have that it's decreasing and concave up. Decreasing and concave up is something that looks like that in that first spot. Then it says it is decreasing and concave down. Decreasing and concave down is doing something like that. Now, the next it's increasing and concave down, which is doing something like that. And then it is increasing and concave up, which is doing something like that. Okay, so those are our macaroni noodles that we have to put here with all of the other stuff. We have a horizontal asymptote at, what was it? Was it y equals 1? So this is our y equals 1. We have that there's a hole at 0, 0, right there. Uh, was there any vertical asymptotes on this? There weren't any vertical asymptotes. Okay. So then from there, the ends, there's something else. Negative, uh, negative 8, negative red 8 thirds. Oh, I'm going to make that go all the way down. 8 thirds. Positive red 8 thirds are places that I should mark so that, you know, I can see where the concavity changes right here. Um, I feel like this right here is happening around zero, zero, right? It's kind of going like this. It's coming up like this. Whoops. I was trying to connect it to that going kind of like that then it's going away like that but then that horizontal asymptote is not being used something's not right what am I missing it's decrease oh there we go that's it this guy right here no well wait did I write those numbers down wrong I did it's plus minus not minus plus when I pulled it down I copied the wrong numbers there we go. Plus or minus. <laughs> well, at least I knew there was something that wasn't right, you know. <laughs> so let's go back to that because that changes my macaroni noodles right there. It doesn't change this stuff here, you know, like this stuff was all okay. All right, let's try it again. It is increasing and concave up. Increasing and concave up is like that. Then it is increasing and concave down. So increasing and concave down is like that, but it's going to connect to that right there. 
and then it is um, decreasing and concave down. So decreasing and concave down is doing something like that. And then it is decreasing and concave up. So decreasing and concave up is something like that. All right, and this is occurring right here. So these sides are going like this. That's what this is saying right here. And then attach that at the bottom, and then it's going like this. It's like a bell. Yeah, the horizontal, it just isn't even used in it. Oh, it's just yeah. half hour. I know. Well, that's what I said. That first one is going to take you the most time, for sure. Okay? So that's when you've got to decide, do I want to end with that one? You know, so that I can just take a deep breath and get going on it. But it's probably one of the easier ones. So. All right, so I have three different types of problems for the second one that's on the test. Um, these are where you're maximizing volume or area. Um, usually there's a perimeter or a surface area or something volume that's given on them. So there's three types here. The type where you have, you start with a rectangular sheet of something and you cut the corners out. Um, one of the classes did that. There are two problems, two problems like that that you have to choose from. There's two problems here that are the cylinder, okay, um, which one class chose the cylinder. They chose the one down at the bottom. And then where you have like a rectangular pen where you're using fencing around either all the sides or three of the sides, you know, whatever. So the first one there, that one is a, a can. Then we have the corners. Here we have a farmer with a rectangular pasture. The rancher with, with uh, his fencing as well. The open box. So this one was done already. Um, an open box again. Oh, wait, maybe that was the one. That's the one I did. I lied. It was 19 that I did, not 17. They both look the same. Um, I did this one here, maximum area for the rancher, and I did the right circular um, cylinder. So I guess those bottom two are done. Um, there's an area where one side is not needed. The box where the corners are taken out for um, the fencing, or there's another cylinder there. Which would you like? Do you think you need more practice at? Anybody? The very first one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. What do you think? Anybody? You want a cylinder? A box? Or a field? A box. So this one here is good? Number two. Okay. So this one here says an open box of maximum volume is to be made from a square piece of material 24 inches on a side um, by cutting equal squares from the corners and turning up the sides to form the box. So here you have the pictures that they're talking about. Heck, this one's even really nice in telling you that this side here is 24 minus 2x and that this side is 24 minus 2x as well. It's given on both sides. What would the height of the box be? X, right. So you should be showing me a volume formula on your paper at some point where you take the length and the width and the height and multiply them. And if this is the problem you get on your test, then you would want to um, give it to me as a polynomial. If you want what's best for you because you're going to have to take the derivative, you probably don't want to do a product rule. You probably would rather just FOIL it. Okay. These numbers are pretty large right here as well. 24 times 24, is that 476? 25? 576, I think it is. And then outside and inside is minus 48x and minus 48x, so minus 96x. And then last, plus 4x squared. And then distribute that x as well. So you get 4x cubed minus 96x squared plus 576x. I kind of like it myself, going from highest to lowest, but you do you. I would not mark you off for that. Okay. Then you have to take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So 12x squared minus, oh my goodness, uh, 200 minus 8 would be 192x. 
And then plus 576 equals zero. I will not do anything that's nasty to you with numbers, okay? I promise it's not going to be that hard. Again, these are a little bit harder because of some of the numbers. These problems here aren't necessarily written for non-calculator. I wrote yours so you didn't need a calculator, okay? Um, to set this equal to zero, well, I would say those are nasty numbers. Maybe could I factor a 12 out? You know, so I do have a calculator here myself today, just in case we had any problems that are like that, but again, you won't need it tomorrow, okay? Um, 576 divided by 12, please, yes. 192 divided by 12, yes. Okay, so we could factor a 12 out right here, and we would get x squared minus 16x plus 48 equals zero. Factors of 48 that add to give me 16, does it factor 48? 6 times 8 is 48. 24 times 2. Uh, 3 times 16. 4 times, no, that can't be. Is it 12? Oh, good. I was thinking 16 there when I went to do it, but okay. Perfect. All right, so this factors then into x minus 4, x minus 12. So x equals 4 and 12. Now, when you do get two answers, many times there's something wrong with one of them. Which one has something wrong with it and why? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so if you do get something like that, usually you can quickly just look over to your measurements and it doesn't work. So when x is 4, so uh, this here is asking what would um, the measurement, is, is, where's the question? It, most of them is just give the dimensions. So we would have 4 inches for our, our height right here. Our width and our length are equal to each other. They're 24 minus 2 times 4, which is 16 inches. So there we would have, make sure you label, this would be 4 inches by 16 inches by 16 inches. If the question was, what is the maximum volume? You just multiply those together. 256 times 4, 1,024 inches cubed. Okay. On this one here, the only one that was not done was number one. Um, this one here, a rectangle is bounded by the x-axis in a semicircle. What length and width should the rectangle have so that its area is a maximum? Okay. So this is one where you'd probably want to draw the picture out. Looking at that equation, what's the radius of this circle? Five. Right. This here is r squared, bless you, minus x squared in there. So that r is the radius. That means this goes over to 5 and goes over to 5 on this side as well. It goes up to 5 as well. But when you go to draw your rectangle in, does this go over to 5? No. So this part right here, we don't know what it is. We call it x. That's why we don't call it 5, though. And that means this side here has x as well. So the entire side is 2x for the rectangle. This point right here that is the x value of x tells me then the height, which is 25 minus x squared. So this here is the height right there of my rectangle. To find the area of the rectangle, you need the length times the width, that's an area formula. Now, let me kind of move these out of the way so we have some room. If you want to maximize the area, because you want the largest rectangle here, then you're going to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. I first would rewrite it. And then take the derivative. I know you're not listening to a word I'm saying now, right? You're waiting for them. <laughs> so we take the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Don't forget the power chain rule. 
Peel that outside layer away, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Here's where you can't fake it, guys. If you don't know derivatives and chain rules and that kind of stuff from the beginning of the year, you sink right here. You're done. You can't even pretend to know. It's growing right now. Things are growing one on top of the other. So you got to make sure that you're staying up on all your skills. So this here is 2 square roots of 25 minus x squared. This over here, those cancel. <coughs> I get minus 2x squared over the square root of 25 minus x squared, and then I set it equal to 0. Let's try to move these guys out of my way a little bit more. To set it equal to 0, you're actually home free at this point, done with the hardest part. Move the negative piece to the other side. two things at once here. You see how both sides have a 2? If you divide both sides by 2, you see how the 2's would cancel? You know, so I, I kind of do that. But then I also say I don't like the square root in the denominator, so I multiply so that it cancels on that side. Then I have to multiply this side as well. And when you multiply a radical by itself, it's the same. It's just what's underneath. Over here, I've just got an x squared. Add x squared to both sides, divide by 2, and take the square root. So x comes out to being plus or minus 5 over rad 2. Because what it's saying is this corner is the positive 5 over rad 2, and this corner is the negative 5 over rad 2. But if I'm talking about the width of a rectangle, and so my, my length, I guess, is 2x, since I'm talking about length, I can only count the positive. Multiply top and bottom by rad 2. You know, I'm just doing some algebra here. This gives me 2 and 2 that reduce, giving me 5 rad 2 for the length. Then to find the width, well, the width is the square root of 25 minus x squared. Remember, it's that height right there. So I get the square root of 25 minus when I square this thing, I get 25 halves, which is the square root of 25 halves, which is 5 over rad 2. So there is the width. Again, if you practice enough of these, you're going to see that one after the other, if you look at every video, they're all the same. Okay. So we didn't make it to the last one, so you definitely want to watch the video on the last one. Okay, the video on the last one is the one where you're selling iPhones and you want to know, you know, at what price you should sell them at, if you want to sell more to maximize your revenues. Okay, so please watch that on the video, okay, on any of the other videos. Okay, I can go ahead and start it right here. You need a price function known as P of X. For this, you start with the current price you're selling them at, minus what the discount is and how many more phones you would sell, and then X minus however many you sell. Okay. When you take and simplify this, you get one-fifth times X minus 500, and then you distribute 720 minus one-fifth X minus 100. Or, sorry, plus, negative times negative. You guys have a great day. Please watch the video that has this one here as well. Okay? I'm going to keep recording. Well, no, you know what? It's the same problem in every class. I guess I don't need to keep recording it. Good luck studying, everybody.